In today's show, let's break down a recently published study finding that animal-sourced protein stimulates muscle protein synthesis to a much greater degree than plant-based protein. Now, I think this is really important because, as you know, there's a big push towards plant-based meat alternatives and plant-based proteins. Many of our major academic institutions are pushing and foisting a plant-based diet on many Americans, but I think it's important to acknowledge that many people have some degree of metabolic dysfunction. They're on the trajectory of developing diabetes or have prediabetes, and as you get more insulin resistant, you're naturally going to lose more muscle mass. Your body is in a catabolic state, so we actually should be promoting diets that help stimulate muscle protein synthesis and prevent the loss of muscle tissue. And what was interesting about this randomized controlled trial is they had three arms of the study. They had the four ounce beef arm, four ounce beef patty. They had a four ounce soy based patty. Then they had an eight ounce soy based patty. And the amount of protein in the soy based patty that was weighing eight ounces was actually 40 grams. It was more than the four ounce beef patty. But what was interesting, and I'll share with you the fat, the figures and the graphics so that you can see just how much the differences here are in muscle protein synthesis, despite the fact that the eight ounce patty had almost double the amount of protein compared to the beef patty, which was just four ounces, the beef patty still increased muscle protein synthesis more than the eight ounce soy patty, despite the fact that again, the soy patty had more protein. Now, this, I think, speaks to the amino acid composition. And that's why when you're looking at labels, just because the protein bar or the, the salad, you know, if you look at the ingredients, if you're buying a salad, for example, that has maybe tempeh or beans or whatever, uh, or even these meat alternatives, the amino acid composition really matters. And Gabrielle Lyon has talked about this, Don Lehman, many other people. We should be looking at the composition of the amino acids in the protein, not just the total protein. Many people say, well, I'm getting protein from walnuts or almonds and my oat milk. I'm getting plenty of protein. But are the amino acids in those protein, protein-based protein foods, even if they're plant-based, are they sufficient to stimulate muscle protein synthesis? And again, this is really important because as you get older, you naturally lose more muscle. You need more stimulation from either resistance training or amino acids to stimulate muscle protein synthesis in the body. Now, if you're eating a diet that is not sufficiently stimulating muscle protein synthesis, and you have prediabetes where you're naturally in a more catabolic state, that's going to be problematic long-term. And we can draw upon a recently published study that found that reduced grip strength was linked with a 45% increased odds of all-cause mortality. So strength really matters. This is a metric we should be focusing on. Okay, so for background and perspective, this, the investigators say soy-based meat alternatives are becoming increasingly popular, but it is unclear if they have the same anabolic effect on skeletal muscle as animal meat. Okay, And I know there's a lot of ethical vegans out there, so I want to empathize with people, and I think everyone should be able to choose the diet that works best for them. I have several clients and people in my life that are friends and acquaintances that do well on a vegan diet, but they're very intentional with the amount of protein and the sources of protein and actually supplementing with both essential amino acids and protein to make sure that they're stimulating muscle protein synthesis because these people are quite physically active. Um, and I have other folks in my life who are quite do quite well um, eating an omnivorous style diet, which is the diet that I endorse and promote. Um, so the results here after randomizing uh, various study subjects between the ages of 18 and 40. So these are younger individuals. They looked at all sorts of different body compositional analysis and so forth. And there was a lot of group similarities uh, that when individuals were randomized to one of the three interventions, again, the four ounce soy burger, the four ounce beef patty, or the eight ounce soy patty. And they looked at whole body rates of muscle protein synthesis, breakdown and net balance, as well as plasma essential amino acid concentrations. In conclusion, they say consumption Consumption of a four ounce beef patty stimulates muscle and whole body protein synthesis greater than a four ounce soy patty and similarly to an eight ounce soy based meat alternative patty. Okay, so I think that's quite interesting and let's go down and look at the baseline characteristics. This is something that I like to teach you know, anyone who's interested in, in looking at studies, we want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. For example, uh, if the median age of the group that was consuming the beef patty was significantly different, that could be problematic. But as you can see here in table one, the, the demographics are quite similar. You have folks uh, in their early 30s um, in, in all groups. You know, the group 
that have just a four ounce uh, patty was a little bit older, uh, 36 versus 30 and 28.9 in the soy based meat alternative group. Um, Roughly evenly split between males and females. Body mass wasn't significantly different. Is uh, significantly different here. Free fat mass and fat mass wasn't significantly different. Uh, but what was interesting here is in table two, is the protein differences, and I think that's worth sort of exploring a little bit more. So the amount of protein that one is getting if they have a four ounce beef patty is about 27 grams. A four ounce soy based meat alternative yields about 20 grams of protein. Now an eight ounce soy based meat alternative has about 40 grams of protein. Now, when we go on down and look at the figure two here, and this is looking at the FSR, the muscle fractional synthetic rates. Uh, I think this is really speaks volumes uh, here. When we look at the the Delta with the four ounce beef patty, it's significantly higher compared to both the four ounce soy patty and also the eight ounce soy patty. Now, I think, again, this is important. If you're trying to figure out, hey, what's the best diet? You know, Where should my protein be coming from? Ethics aside and so forth. Obviously, animal sourced foods are going to stimulate muscle protein synthesis to a much greater degree compared to the plant-based alternatives. You're just going to have to get much more protein from plants and, and increase the amount of you know, protein per kilogram of lean body mass. Um, now, when we look here at whole body protein synthetic rates, uh, you can see here uh, the soy-based um, burger, eight ounces, remember 40 grams versus just 27 grams. So you're getting significantly more protein uh, in the eight ounces of the soy burger versus just four ounces of the beef burger. Uh, this is where you do see a more significant increase in whole body protein synthesis. But if you're comparing the beef, the four ounce beef burger to the four ounce soy burger, uh, the beef burger is significantly increasing whole body protein synthesis. Now we're going to go on and read more about the conclusion and also talk about the essential amino acids acid concentrations shortly. But friends, I just want to say thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, please hit that like button. Now, since we're talking about muscle protein synthesis as it pertains to whole body health as well as exercise and metabolic health, I just want to remind you about a great tool that can help you with your exercise performance as well as supporting healthy hydration. And this is the novel Creatine Enhanced Electrolytes by Myoscience. What makes this product unique is you're getting the Creapure Creatine Monohydrate made in Germany, not China like most of the other creatines out there, paired with essential electrolytes that not only help you support healthy hydration, but help increase the utilization and the efficiency of creatine. It turns out that in order to get creatine into your muscles and into your brain and to utilize creatine effectively, you need electrolytes. There's this thing called a creatine transport protein and creatine transporters. They depend upon sodium, potassium, as well as other electrolytes like magnesium that are all contained in the Myoscience electrolyte sticks. There's close to 900 reviews over at myoscience.com. You can save with the code podcast. Uh, if you exercise, if you go in the sauna, if you want to optimize creatine absorption and utilization and see what other people are saying over at myoscience.com, I will put links in the description below. So definitely check that out if you exercise. So getting back to figure three, I think this is really important. We, is, you know, we should be focusing on uh, essential amino acids, not just protein. And if we're talking about the uh, increase in essential amino acids, now, these are amino acids that are essential because your body does not make them. As you know, there are conditionally essential as well as essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. And it turns out that our body doesn't make all of the essential amino acids. But we get those from animal sourced foods. Now I know this is, you know, um, controversial because of animal welfare and the climate and what about greenhouse gases and all of this thing. But if we're just, and all of these things, but if we're just focusing on health here and we're keeping the conversation to muscle protein synthesis and health and recovery, um, it's hard to make the argument that animal sourced foods are not superior towards uh, in comparison to plant sourced foods. And if you look here in figure three, you can see here that the essential amino acids are significantly higher in the serum after consuming just four ounces of an animal sourced protein compared to a plant sourced protein. Now, this happens to be soy protein, but if you're going to pick proteins outside of the genetically modified argument, I know a lot of soy is GMO and sprayed with glyphosate and all of this, it's probably going to be the best vegan protein in terms of the essential amino acids. Now, even with that said, having 40 grams of soy protein, it doesn't compare to just 27 grams of beef protein, in this case, a beef patty. So I think that's important 
uh, for folks to consider, especially if you're exercising, especially if you want to prevent age-related muscle loss, especially if you're a little bit on the pre-diabetic spectrum, because as we've talked about over and over again, insulin resistant people are naturally in a more catabolic state and they need to actually be a little bit more cognizant and intentional with stimulating muscle protein synthesis by way of exercise as well as dietary protein sources. So it turns out that if you're going to pick one protein source, in my opinion, the answer is going to be beef. It's going to be eggs. It's going to be lamb. It's going to be uh, protein from ruminant animals. I'm not a huge fan of chicken for a myriad of different reasons. I think Eggs from chicken are amazing, but most commercially raised chickens here in the U.S. are in grow houses. They're fed genetically modified food. They're stepping all over each other. They never see the light of day. They're, they never touch dirt. They're on concrete. And again, most of these broilers have been selected for. You need to learn a little bit more about the chicken of tomorrow meeting after the post-World War II where growers and you know, chicken breeders have been selecting for increased yield and quick to grow broilers. Um, I'm, I'm just more a fan basically uh, of ruminant animals because they are eating what nature intended them to eat. And that is uh, uh, grass and, and plant matter that they're able to properly digest in their rumen, which can be the size of up to three beer kegs. I mean, the rumen is massive and that's how much digestive energy you need to put in to break down plant matter and convert that into, by way of the microbes found in the rumen, into uh, essential amino acids and, and, and to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So you are a monogastric animal. You don't have a rumen. And so therefore, heavily relying upon all this plant material to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and live a health-promoting health life, I think is a little bit of a challenge. So I'm a huge fan of chicken eggs, not a huge fan of chicken protein. So in conclusion, I think this study really exemplifies the point that Don Lehman and Gabrielle Lyon and many others have been talking about, and we should really prioritize a protein in terms of its essential amino acids and look at what amino acids we're getting from those protein sources. And it turns out that animal sourced protein, whether we're talking about raw dairy, we're talking about eggs, uh, fish or beef, uh, lamb, things like that, they're going to contain higher amounts of these essential amino acids that stimulate muscle protein synthesis and help us with uh, other aspects uh, of health. And so um, essentially that's what this study actually found. So if you want to go vegan, for ethical reasons, uh, what have you, you're just gonna have to have a lot more protein overall. And so uh, the recommendations of around one to 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of I ideal body weight, if you wanna be vegan, you might be looking more at like 1.6 grams of vegan protein per kilogram of ideal body weight or even more um, because of the fact that you're going to, the, the essential amino acids are just not uh, the same in, in protein equivalent parts of food. And so you're just going to have to have more protein. So I think that's important for us to recognize though. Uh, I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. As always, I'm grateful for you tuning all the way through. Appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares. What are your thoughts on this study? Let me know in the comment section below and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.